Hello everyone. Today we're going to cover the counter-controlled while loop in Java. This is going to be extremely similar to the C++ version. However, I understand that for Java there is some syntax differences. Um, so actually, so just a bit of history, Java comes from C++. Um, so a lot of the syntax is going to be exactly the same. The data types are going to be the same, like int, double, and so forth. Um, but Java has a different template. So I'm actually going to go cover these topics first before I even get to the while loop itself. Uh, so make sure to watch this uh, video. And also, before, as a reminder, make sure to watch the C++ videos, then the Java videos, then the Python videos. Do it always in that order. And make sure to watch this video um, above all else, because if you want to uh, feel comfortable with the Java syntax, um, I'm going to cover some very important aspects in this lecture. So it's not just a while loop. It's actually just some syntax as well. So how do I actually start the program? I'm not going to do it like C++, where I say include iOS stream, all of that. Forget about that. That's C++. Um, if I want to do it in Java, I actually have to start off by creating a class. There's always everything in Java is with inside of the class. Um, but what do we call it, right? So what do we call it? So we don't really want to describe the class yet, just because that's a more advanced topic, like chapter 10 in C++. Unfortunately, with Java, we, we get hit with it straight away. Um, but what do I want to call this class? So I say public class. So this is something you have to do every single time. Notice that this is called main.java, right here on the top left-hand corner. So actually, um, that's the name of the file, main, and then the extension is .java. So for example, if I had a, a Word document called julio.docx, um, right? So if you have some kind of Word file, it typically has the extension. So let's say julio.docx. Um, the extension would be a .docx because it's a Word file, but the name of the file is julio in that case. And so what we're going to do is we're going to name the class the same as the name of the file, so .main. If this was pizza.java, I would actually call this uh, pizza, right? Public class pizza. But anyways, uh, because this is main, we're going to call it main, right? So that you're going to notice that it's going to be a different in your Cengage homeworks. They're going to provide this code for you already, or this this template or boilerplate, and um, it's always going to say public class and then the name of the file. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is we want to have our main function. Our main function, the way we write it, and unfortunately, this is just going to be a memorization for right now. Um, uh, the Technically, these are called access specifiers, but uh, right now we just want to focus on getting that, getting our code up and running for the Cengage homework. So we're going to say public class, um, or sorry, sorry, public static void, public static void. That's going to um, be the prefix, and then it's going to be the main function. Okay, so it's going to be public static void main. Um, don't worry about this too much yet. Uh, just know that everything in Java is a class, and we have just everything's an object for the most part. So public static void main. Inside, you're going to put capital S for string. You're going to put some brackets. Um, those brackets refer to the array operator. We're going to cover arrays a little bit later. And we're going to say args. This is the traditional format. Once you get this down, so make sure to copy this. Make sure to have this kind of ingrained. It's very similar to how we start up every C++ file with include iOS stream uh, using namespace std int main return 0. So if you feel comfortable with that, uh, it's this is the exact same idea. So this is where your source code goes. Your source code actually goes in here. This is where you write all of your code. Uh, the Cengage homework is probably going to actually does provide all of this, so don't worry. Just make sure not to erase it. Or if you do erase it, then now you know at least how to um, bring it back. Right. Um, that being said, now that we have the template, uh, let's start printing. So in order to print in C++, we have iOS stream. In this case, we have something called, and we also use just let's say if I want to say C out, hello world. I have to say C out, hello world. And then I end line. So that says hello world, and then it brings something to the next line. We don't actually do this in Java. What we actually do is we say system.out. So now it knows the output. So we're going to print to the screen. And then we're going to say print line. The reason why we say print line is because it actually combines whatever you're printing with the end out. So it actually prints it to the new line. So let's print hello. And you'll notice in this case, it looks very, very similar to C++. Anything that's within the quotation marks gets printed to your screen. And let's print out so something else, uh, print line. Um, we're going to print hello world. Hello world, there we go. And if we run this, you're going to notice that it's actually going to print hello world on two separate lines. You can actually use the print function if you don't want it to end line. That works as well. Or you can use a backslash n. You know, there's different ways of doing it. I just tend to prefer the print line, and I believe Cengage homework does as well. 
So that's essentially how we're going to print things to the screen. Um, the next one is going to be how to use the scanner library. So whenever you need to input, actually, let me repeat that. If you need to print anything to the screen, we're going to use system out.println or print. That works. But how do we actually input? So this is the output portion. We need the input portion. You actually need to import a library. So it's very similar to including a library, but this time we're going to import Java dot util. So it's a utility dot scan. Okay, so this is actually a package that's going to allow us to read in. It's it's very similar to this idea of CN. The scanner allows us to read in from from a keyboard, or, um, and then after be able to use that to initialize any data member that we would like. So let's take a look about let's take a look at how we create those scanners. Everything about this is done already for you in Cengage, but I want you to understand this actual code so that if you need to write it on your own, you can, or if it gets erased or Later on in more compl complex projects, you are going to have to write this on your own. So uh, it's, it's something good to know. So we're going to create a scanner. And we're going to call it CN. OK, we're going to call it CN. Usually, your projects are going to call it S. But we're going to call it CN so that it looks similar to uh, the way we do it in C++. We're going to create a new scanner. New scanner. And what is it going to take our input from? It's going to take our input from system.in. So this is the exact, this is saying that it's reading in from our keyboard. It's creating a new scanner. And we're calling that new scanner CN. That's, that's all that it refers to. This is another one, another part where you might have to kind of memorize the syntax, unfortunately. <clears throat> but this works uh, perfectly. Now let's, let's create something to, uh, let's create a variable to uh, store our inputs. So let's say this is our user input. And it's an integer. So if I want to be able to input uh, right here, let's just say I initialize it to zero. I want to say, instead of cout, I want to say system.out.println. Please enter a value. And we're going to input it, console input it into user input. So how exactly do we do that? We say user input is equal to cn dot. And here's where it gets a little interesting. So you say cn dot. If you say next, no parentheses, it takes in a string. This is not going to work because this actually takes in a string. So how do I take in an integer since this is typed integer? I say next int. So it, it actually reads in an integer. And then, uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to print it out. So we're going to print out system.out.println. Uh, the value you entered was, sorry, I got a little bit of C++ in me there. Uh, we're going to print it out with the user input. So the value you answered was this user input. So notice we're not writing less than, less than. We're writing plus. So we can concatenate or kind of glue them together. So if I were to do something like this, let's take a look at it. Um, so it says, please enter a value. It's going to be 5. And it says the value you answered was 5. So now we're up and running. We know how to, how to write the, uh, the package for our scanner. We know how to uh, declare variables. We know how to input. Um, declaring variables is the same as C++. And we also know how to uh, see in our console input for our variables. So everything's looking good so far. As, as a reminder, we can change this function so it'll take in a string. So actually, you'll notice that this time it'll crash because what we end up getting is this. It says that we're taking in a string, and then we're trying to store it in this variable that's an integer. So it's incompatible. So we're trying to, it's saying, whoa, 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 Julio, the, you know, that's, that's a string. You can't actually force that into an integer, and it tends to be an error. Uh, this tends to be easy. So if I want to take a double, I say next double. If I want to take a string, I say next, uh, just next. Um, you, you can use these functions really easily to take in something, however, or to, to take in some user input. But um, Sengage does not want you to do it this way, even though it's easier. Sengage will always provide two inputs. It'll provide a string version. So you'll see something that says string, user input string, so which refers to the string version. And, and you'll see the integer version, or maybe the double version, right? So you might see the double version of it. Um, but for now, let's just have it as an int. So how do I actually input, in this case, according to Cengage? What you're going to do is uh, you're actually going to first, actually, let's let's, let's ourselves um, print out some kind of command so we know what we're doing when we run the program. So we say, please enter a value. 
uh, we're going to go ahead and actually popular we're going to initialize our user input string first the, and so in order to uh, to initialize this we're going to say user input string is equal to cn dot next and actually you can use next line next line is a little more convenient uh, the difference between the two is let's say if you enter Ricky Ricardo Ricky Ricardo right um, if you use next line the whole Ricky Ricardo name will get stored everything on this line will get stored versus if you use next it'll still take in a string but it'll only take up to a the break up to a white space so this this space right here it'll only take up to Ricky because after that there's a space in between so if you want the full name you're actually going to need to use next line and that's going to store it in user input string um, let's go here so now we have that set but I want to I want it to be an int right here we take in a string that represents an integer but it's not it's not really it's not really an integer it's a string so how do I do that conversion well in C++ that's called casting um, versus in Java it's called parsing okay so you're gonna actually parse the string into an integer in this case so let's say user inputs is equal to let's convert user input string into an integer so I'm gonna say the integer dot parse int and then we're gonna pass in the string user input string so essentially what this does is it takes this so actually let's backtrack we say please enter a value they enter a value like let's say 77 um, but it's a string version so we need to we need to turn that into an integer so then we say integer dot parse int, and this converts the string 77 into an integer 77. And then the last thing we do is we can print it out. System dot out dot print line. And we're going to print out user, actually, uh, the value you entered as an in int is, and then let's add uh, user inputs. There we go. So I know this is kind of a bit of a long video, but I just want to make sure that you feel comfortable with all of these fundamentals. So please enter a value 77. The value you entered as an int is 77. So as one final recap, um, in order to be able to console input or read in any data, you need a scanner. For just to make this a bit more convenient, we called it CN, just because we're used to that from C++. As a reminder, always, always, always watch the C++ videos, then Java, and then Python, because I will be doing or performing those videos in that order. So we use uh, CN as our scanner object, uh, and it allows us to read in values. Where, according to Cengage, they want us to take in any input as a string, and then be able to parse it later on into the actual integer or double, whatever it may be. Uh, all right, everyone, so I apologize for the interruption. If you have an integer and we want to parse, and if we want to take in an integer or take in some kind of user input, we can get next line, which is the string. We're going to go ahead and parse it into an integer and then be able to print it out or work with it, process it any way we want. Um, but if, let's say, you want a double or a float, let's use a float in this case. Um, so I'll make my user input a float. And what I'll do is when I convert it, I'm not going to convert it into an integer. I'm going to actually parse it into a float. Right. And so now this should work when I run it. <clears throat> Let's take a look. It's going to say, please enter a value like 9.8. And it's going to say the value you entered as an int, actually, so that's more of a logical error, as a float, right? As a float is, that's, that's not really any of the coding logic. That's just to show that, you know, we know what it is. Um, so let's say 98.6. 98.6 is going to be uh, the value you entered as a float is 98.6. And that's how we essentially work with our scanners. This is going to be very useful for, for future videos, especially the Sentinel value. Uh, but right now, we're just covering it here just so that you feel comfortable with it. And you should be watching it in a um, logical or a progressive order. So this, you always watch the counter control video before the, the Sentinel value. Now let's actually work with the while loop. The while loop is very straightforward. It's going to be exactly like the C++ video. So if you watch the C++ video, um, there's just the three steps. Uh, create your counter variable. So we're going to say int counter is equal to zero. And we're going to say our condition while our counter is less than 10. So we'll loop zero through nine, which is exactly 10 iterations. What we're also going to have is our last point where we're going to alter the counter. In this case, we're going to increment. We're going to keep adding by one. So we're going to say counter plus plus. 
so that if we eventually get to the point where counter is equal to 10 and counter is not less than 10, which makes it false and it exits the loop, right? So it's, it's essentially just gonna iterate through 10 times. So anything in here, in here is repeated 10 times, 10 times, uh, 10 times. Now that being said, uh, let's go ahead and print something out that's interesting. Let's print out our counter. So I'm gonna say system.out.println and here's my counter value. So uh, counter value and we're gonna add the counter value. That's it. And let's run it. And you're gonna notice it's gonna print out the words counter value and then uh, the actual value of the counter, which is zero through nine. Um, it's showing it for each iteration. What if we wanna do something a little more exciting and we wanna do multiples of 100, right? Let's do system.l.println. Uh, we're gonna say counter value uh, times 100. And that's going to be uh, the counter times 100. There we are. Actually, let's get rid of this so we can see the code. And it's actually gonna be the counter and then counter times 100. So zero and zero times 100 is zero. One and one times 100 is 100. The last one is nine and nine times 100 is 900. I hope that helped. I know this was a very long video. Um, I also am uploading the videos on Python for the counter control loop and the Sentinel value. So make sure to watch those. Um, always, always, always be sure to watch all three sets just so that you're comfortable with the syntax in all three languages. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I hope to catch you guys soon.